Big Hill was the first major obstacle that the pioneers faced coming into the state of Idaho, what is now the state of Idaho. It was something they had never had to practice for, never had any idea how to do it. Everything had been primarily flat. They had crossed rivers, but this was the first big hill. They didn't quite know, they had a lot of accidents, nearly every wagon had a damage of some kind. And when they reached the bottom of Big Hill, they went into camp and camped at what is pretty much this location. This was their first major camp area where they could take time to repair things and wash and rest and take care of the animals that were injured. They had quite a time. When we did this book, Gary went out on the trail, painted everything that he saw as it stood, and then came home and put in the detail based on what we were reading in the diaries. What did you do at Big Hill? <laughs> well, first off, when I make a painting like that, I had one of the ranchers that owned a lot of the property up on the other side of Big Hill, took us, uh, we both got on his horses, Paso horses, which were really different for me. I've ridden horses all my life, but they throw their feet out of a certain gate. And we just went over the top of that mountain. We found a new grave that nobody knew about. Uh, we found an old, old uh, survey marker that was really significant to that rancher because it improved his property by about a 20 acres or so. <laughs> And he always knew that was up there, but we found it. <clears throat> anyway, when they got down to the bottom of Big Hill, then they would rest, and here is the scene right at the bottom. Uh, I spotted this big moose out there that day that I was uh, making this painting. That's how he got in there. <clears throat> this gentleman here, uh, I can't remember his name, but he used to be a Pony Express rider and I took his image from old photographs and put him in different parts of the paintings, which is kind of cool, I like yeah, that. that's great. Every person in the painting is a real individual. Yeah, everybody in here is somebody that I met on the trail. Uh, either they worked for the Forest Service, the BLM, or was just a rancher or a farmer. This one's kind of fun. This guy looked over at uh, the lake and it looked like it was only about this deep that he shot this duck or a goose and went out to get it. And he said, I stepped in the water and went up to me neck. So it was really deep right where he was at. So here he is climbing up with his duck and everybody's laughing at him or having a good time with him. <laughs> and Gary has hidden an Indian lurking in every painting. So there are challenges in every piece of artwork. There's an Indian in all of these paintings, but it's visible. He has hidden my name, your name, Bev. B-E-B. B-E-B, and his portrait, his self-portrait, in every one of these paintings. So there's the challenge for everyone. And as well as his I'll signature. just give you a hint in this one, there's the Indian. But a lot of them are a lot smaller than that one. That one's pretty obvious. <laughs> This diary excerpt is from September 15, 1847, prior to the California Gold Rush. These people were headed for Oregon. Laid by, one morning one company moved on except one family. The woman got mad and would not budge, nor let the children go. He had his cattle hitched on for three hours, coaxing her to go, but she would not stir. I told my husband the circumstance, and he and Adam Polk and Mr. Kimball went and took each one a young one and crammed him in the wagon, and he drove off and left her sitting. She got up, took the back track, and traveled out of sight, cut across, overtook her husband. Meantime, he sent his boy back to camp after a horse that he had left, and when she came up, her husband says, did you meet John? Yes, was the reply, and I picked up a stone and knocked out his brains. Her husband went back to ascertain the truth, and while he was gone, she set one of his wagons on fire, which was loaded with store goods. The cover burned off in some valuable articles. 
he saw the flames and came running and put it out and then mustered spunk enough to give her a good flogging. Her name is Markham. She is cousin to Adam Polk's wife from the diary of Elizabeth Dixon Gear. This lady had already traversed the worst river crossing on the whole Oregon Trail. This was the next day after they had set up camp. For her to return meant recrossing that river. She had simply lost her mind. Adam Polk, who was one that grabbed him, was the leader of the wagon train. And so he, that's why he took charge.